Vanishing Cultures Far North by Jan Reynolds. Introduction The Sammies live in a land of the far north called Finnmark or Lapland, where the sun can sometimes shine all day and night during the summer and sometimes not shine at all in the winter. They make their shelters by wrapping heavy cloth around poles made from trees, which are then fastened together at the top. For thousands of years, the Sammies have followed the migration of the reindeer across the plateaus and up into the mountains in the summer, then back down to the plateaus in the winter. Following the natural cycle of the seasons, they believe that nature will always care for them. But this ancient way of life is disappearing as new roads and towns change the landscape and helicopters and snowmobiles replace the Sammy's traditional methods of reindeer herding. We and the Sammies are all part of the same human family, and the loss of the Sammies' traditional way of life is our loss too. Like the Sammies, we all depend on the natural world to live. We all share this earth, its lands and waters. And because of this, perhaps we should look, take a look at the Sammies' life in harmony with nature before it vanishes forever. There is a place in the far north where the sun can stay up in the sky all day and all night. It is called the land of the midnight sun. In the chill of the evening when the sun hangs low, Sarah and Carrie, two Sammy girls, draw closer to the fire as their mother begins to tell them a story. Long ago, your grandmother followed the reindeer as they traveled up into the mountains for the green summer grass and the high pastures. Like all Sammies, she lived her life close to the rhythm of the land and animals, following the circle of the changing seasons. In the warmth of summer, when the sun shone all day and night, life was good in the mountains. But in the dark cold of winter, when the sun sometimes did not rise at all, she and the reindeer would return to the lowlands where winter was more gentle. The Sammy shaman seems to be the first to know when the seasons will change. The shaman believes the trees, rocks, and waters all around have their own spirits. And with the help of his drum, he talks with these spirits to find answers for the Sammies. Soon, Sarah and Carrie are fast asleep. It is early spring and Sarah and Carrie's father is out rounding up the family's reindeer. Like their grandmother, Sarah and Carrie will travel with the reindeer up into the high mountains. The next day, while the girls wait for their father to return, Carrie gathers small berries as a treat for the family. After gathering the fruit, she hangs reindeer skins out to dry. Reindeer are the center of Sammy life. Their hides are used for clothing and blankets, their meat for food, and they pull the sledges the Sammies ride across the snow. The Sammies also drink the nourishing liquid from inside the reindeer bones. Then they carve the bones to make spoons, needles, and other things they need. When their father arrives, the girls help their mother take down the lavu, their simple tent, and get ready for moving to the mountains. Carrie is happy to see her favorite dog again. He is very good at herding and always goes with Carrie's father to gather the reindeer. When the reindeer are rounded up, they must be fed. Sarah and Carrie set out some hay for their father to take to the herd. 
While the girls are busy, their father goes to get a sledge to carry the hay on. Although the sun is still up, it is nighttime. After helping her mother and sister pack their belongings onto sledges, Carrie falls asleep on an empty sledge. The family will begin moving later in the night when the sun is even lower and the air becomes colder. Then, as the snow freezes harder, the sledges will slide faster and more easily. While Carrie and her sister sleep, their father takes hay out for the reindeer to eat. During the winter, when the reindeer are allowed to roam freely, they eat lichen, a small plant they dig up from under the snow with their hooves. After the reindeer have eaten, father brings in the strongest one to harness to the sledge. It is time to begin moving to the mountains. Carrie and Sarah like to ride with their father, listening to him yoiking, singing traditional Sami poetry. Occasionally, they stop to let the reindeer rest and graze where the spring sun has melted away the snow. As they follow the herd, their father reminds them of what Sammies have always believed. Nature will care for them as it does all living things. The traditional Sammies look forward to living high in the mountains for the summer. Some will stay in a goatee, a hut, instead of the lavu. After the snow melts, all the different family reindeer herds will graze together in the high pastures. The animals will grow strong and healthy, which will help them through the long winter to come. By the end of summer, the adult reindeer will have shed their old antlers. They will have soft, new ones covered with velvet, a fuzzy skin that falls off when the antlers become hard bone. Along with their new calves, they will be herded into a large corral. This is when the calves ears are marked. Each Sammy family has its own mark, and the children in each family have their own marks too. These earmarks are important. Each family will use them to separate its reindeer from all the rest when it's time to leave the mountains and travel back to the lowlands for the winter. Sarah and Carrie can spot their family's animals from a distance. While Sarah helps her father, she points to a lone reindeer and asks Carrie to check the ear marking. Carrie calls back, this is your reindeer, Sarah. Before Sarah and Carrie reach the mountains and high pastures, there is still more traveling to do. Mother has already gone ahead with other Sammies to prepare the lavos at a resting place. While the girls are helping their father with the reindeer, their mother gathers wood for the fire and makes a pot of stew. She knows her family will be hungry when they arrive. Like Carrie and Sarah and their family, other Sammies are also herding their reindeer to the mountain pastures. As the different families arrive, they begin to gather for the big spring celebration. Every year, the Sammy celebrate the end of the long, cold, dark winter. They dress in beautiful woolen and deerskin clothes covered with decorative, hand-woven braid. Everyone is happy. The spring celebration is a time for friends who haven't seen each other for a long time to talk and laugh together. There are games, too. Over his shoulder, father carries his favorite blue lasso, a special rope used to catch reindeer. He will compete against others in a contest to see who can throw their lasso the best. Sarah and Carrie make their own game. They turn in circles to see how far they can spin their skirts out, laughing as they make themselves dizzy. But the most exciting part of the celebration is the reindeer race. Both men and women compete together, and Sarah and Carrie's mother is going to race this year. She carefully checks her sledge to make sure everything is ready. 
Far out across the snow, the Sammies raced their reindeer. It is hard to tell who was winning at first, but as the racers get closer, it looks like a young man might win. Then suddenly, Mother's reindeer bursts into the lead and crosses the finish line. Carrie and Sarah are happy their mother won the race. They are very proud of their strong reindeer and to be Sammies living in the far north. About the journey. Ever since I was a child, I have been fascinated by the Sammies who live in the far north above the Arctic Circle in the upper reaches of Scandinavia. These people have been living in peaceful harmony with nature for thousands of years. I am especially intrigued by Sami shamans who are beautiful examples of the basic Sami belief that nature will always care for them. When a shaman beats his drum, he enters into conversation with all the spirits of nature to receive knowledge. I had always hoped to someday meet these people. However, what first brought me to the land of the Sammies, the land of the midnight sun, was neither the Sammies nor their shamans, but a nuclear disaster. I went to Finnmark to report on how one of the world's ancient cultures inseparable from the earth and her natural cycles was being directly altered by the nuclear age. The year before my first trip, a wind from the southeast brought a deadly rain over the far north. The unsuspecting Sammies had no idea that a nuclear power plant in Chernobyl in what is now the Ukraine had exploded, sending radioactive poisons thousands of meters into the atmosphere. This radioactive material soon rained down on the Sammies, their animals, and their wilderness. The first news was that the radioactivity had poisoned everything. Water, forests, all of nature, everything the Sami life was built upon. The Samis had lived through hard winters before when part of their reindeer herds had died. They understood and accepted natural disasters. But to these people, it was difficult to accept that their apparently healthy reindeer could be deadly because of radioactive contamination and that the beautiful life-sustaining land they lived on could be considered a death zone. Unlike elk and moose, the reindeer's diet during the winter consists of raovi, a lichen without roots. Because this lichen is slow to flush and cleanse its rootless system, the reindeer risked re-ingesting the water-soluble, cancer-causing radioactivity year after year. With their animals, food, land, and water contaminated, the Sami's traditional ways appeared to be threatened. Although an incredible number of contaminated reindeer had been destroyed and buried in mass graves, when the Swedish government tested the herds to determine safe levels of contamination, they discovered that the reindeer with lower radiation levels were in fact slowly cleansing themselves. Some herds were even trucked to cleaner pastures to survive. Although it would take years, the herd would continue and the Sammies could rebuild their life with the reindeer. During the return trips I made to this region following my study of the effects of Chernobyl, I was able to share in the rich culture of the Sammies, a people who have lived in this area perhaps since the time the ice receded from the land. Although almost nothing of their heritage has been written down, the pattern of their lives is well known. Throughout the years, their way of life has remained the same because of their reliance on the reindeer. In the summer, the reindeer migrate higher into the mountains to graze, and in the fall, they return to the lower plateaus and are separated into groups for rutting. In the winter, the reindeer graze snow-covered pine, heaths for Rayovi by digging through the crust with their hooves. The physical boundaries of the Sami's land and the rhythm of their lives are set by natural forces and the instinctive migration of the reindeer, not by politics and economics. For the traditional Sami's, the reindeer have always been the ridge pole of life. These people are 
these people ate no bread, only meat, milk, and cheese from their deer. Hides were used for clothing and bones for utensils. Even the birch bark covered lavos were sewn with reindeer sinews. Along with providing food, transportation, and clothing, the reindeer played a central role in cultural ceremonies. For example, when a suitor came in search of marriage, he circled his lover's lavo with his reindeer and sledge, and if the woman stepped out and unharnessed the reindeer, he could proceed with the courting. When the two lovers exchanged draft deer, they were engaged. I was fortunate enough to be lovingly taken in by the Utsi family, who are still holding on to some of the older Sami traditions. I first met Karen Utsi, Sarah and Carrie's mother, at the spring celebration. Although I spoke no Sami and she spoke no English, we shared a common language, Norwegian. She, jo she jovially invited me to share a meal with her and her family in their lavo. While cooking reindeer stew in a big black pot hung over an open fire, Karen told me she was born in the lavo just like the one we were sitting in. As we waited for the family to arrive on the sledges, Karen told me her fondest memory as a child, moving the reindeer during the long summer nights under the dim, low-lying sun. To her, it was magical, almost like living in a dream to be so tired, yet so happy, up all night out in the wilds of the plateau. After spending time with Karen, I came to admire her strength and good humor, despite adversity. Although the cause couldn't be precisely determined, Karen's husband had recently lost his stomach to cancer. I could tell she was a strong woman, and I could see why some people believe the Sammies were a matriarchal society. And I can believe the stories that have been passed down through the years that a Sami woman might leave her child suspended in a reindeer skin in a tree with a marrow bone to suck on so she could join or lead the hunts. One day, we were picking berries that grow in the open patches of vegetation that appear on the tundra, which look like green islands in a sea of snow. The sun was now up almost around the clock and the weather was quite warm and pleasant. After eating our fill of berries, we climbed onto the sledge to travel home. Carrie's father handed her the reins and jumped on behind me. Then he began yoking, singing Sammy poems with warmth and contentment. The sun was bright, the snow was fast, the sledge was swift, and we were happy. A feeling of serenity ran through me and I was left with a deep respect and appreciation for the interconnection of the Sammy's lives with all things in nature. I began to see that all people are inseparable from the land, and when the last traditional Sammies are gone, it means more than the disappearance of a way of life. It's the loss of humankind in deep harmony with nature, at peace with their world. Jan Reynolds